Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to the Intuitive Heart Healer Podcast. My name is Valerie McLaughlin, and I will be your host, intuitive heart healer, energy artist, and spiritual guide. I hold space with love, helping people to connect with their heart centers so they can connect greater to spirit, live a life full of love, happiness, and joy where they're guided by their intuition. Hello, and on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about what I mean when I say I don't believe in good and bad, I just accept what is. Recently, I had done a YouTube chat with my friend Ursula about the upcoming eclipse season, which you can check out on my YouTube channel, Intuitive Heart Healer. And during that chat, I had talked about how I don't believe in good and bad, I just accept what is. And that is the space in which I wish to come to the majority of the time. I'm not perfect, so it doesn't always happen, but I tend to try to look at things that way. And I had somebody reach out and ask me a very good question. So I thought it would be a great topic to talk about because it was such a insightful question and it got me really thinking about how I can accept certain things for what they are without placing good or bad on them. So before we start talking about good and bad and accepting what is, I want to talk about suffering because a lot of this has to do with our viewpoint from suffering. We are not here to suffer or to stay in suffering. Our purpose is love, happiness, and joy. There's times in our human experience where suffering comes up. A loss of a loved one, a sickness like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, or an injury, an accident, where maybe we broke some bones or broke our back. A violent act towards us or towards our loved ones, whether that's injury or assault, sexual assault, those are all violent acts towards us or towards our loved ones. And these experiences can cause suffering or cause us to suffer. They are not created for us though to stay in our suffering. They are here to show us how powerful love is, to transform that hurt, that sadness, pain, and anger into joy, happiness, and love. They are here to teach us to let go so that we can grow and ascend. We are here on this wonderful planet called Earth having these human experiences to become more enlightened souls. These experiences that we have, they are here and always here to help us. We begin to ascend even more through these experiences. They connect us more to our higher power, whatever that higher power in which we believe in, whether it's source, whether it's God, our higher self, the universe, whatever that higher power is. So with that being said, let's talk about the question that was brought up to me. The question was, how can I sit from a place of no good and no bad, especially when it comes to children, acts of violence towards children, sexual abuse towards children, and things like that? had me sit and reflect, discern my feelings, and really go into a place in my heart to really go to the the answer that I was seeking. I was really grateful for this question because it's also something that I had for a very long time gone back and forth over. Even in times like today, where there's a lot of injustice within this country and around the world, I always have to take a pause and look at the greater picture and reconnect with my heart center 
to understand the lessons that all of this is teaching us. And here are a few thoughts on the topic that I have. I said, I believe one of the things we are here to do is to release and let go so that we can ascend. And judgment is one of those things that we are here to release and let go. When we come from a place that there is good and there is bad, we are constantly in a state of judgment. We are judging and praising those people who we consider good or have done good deeds. And we are punishing people who we believe are bad. And it doesn't just have to be people. It can be, it can be places, it can be things, it can be situations, it can be accidents, it can be the food we eat, animals, the environment, it can be plants, it can be trees. That label of good and bad, whatever it is, is spread throughout everything here on earth. And when we put those things into those labels of good and bad, we are in a constant state of judgment. And one of the things that we are here to do is to release judgment so that we can ascend. We also only know what we know at the time. So a person who has come here to teach us a very quote unquote tough lesson, I believe comes here as part of their soul lesson. They actually come here under this contract, coming from this place to serve us, to show us that things can and should be better, whatever that looks like for us. They are also here to help us to heal this behavior, to heal ourselves, to heal our souls. They are here to teach us lessons along the way, and they are here to actually serve a greater good for all of us. I do want to make it clear. I am not justifying behaviors. I am not justifying accidents and violent crimes. I am not justifying social injustice or the way that we treat each other, treat the planet, our environment, the food that we eat. I am just saying that I am looking at it as an opportunity, an opportunity for us to show up better. I'm sure that whoever does this is learning a great lesson too, on a soul's level, on a human level. They are teaching us to forgive, not to forget, but to forgive. To take a look at the situation, the person, the things that happen that may have caused you suffering, I would ask you to take a look at it at a different perspective. And I'm going to share a story with you because it was pretty eye-opening for me when it happened. And I can actually give you a couple of different stories maybe I will share along with you to help you kind of better understand where I'm coming from. My dad at a very young age lost his mother. He was five years old. I always looked at him and my mom and I always say, where did these two actually come from? Because they have taught me so much and shown me so much and situations from both their homes. It's just amazing of how great they have turned out. And I say that because not just because they are my parents, but I believe that they are amazing people that come from this place of love and share so much love in the world and has taught me that and allowed me to share that love with all of you. So my dad at the age, I believe it was five, lost his mother. She had went into a have surgery done. Before she even went into surgery, she ended up dying when they gave her the anesthesia. And I was having a conversation with him over the holidays. I believe it was on cookie day. And I wanted to know a little bit more about him growing up. I have had heard stories from other people, but I hadn't really talked about it with my father much. And he told me the story about how his father had met somebody else. And this situation and how he met this person was not maybe the ideal situation 
for him to bring in to his family. For a recently widow husband that had three young boys. So my grandfather decided to look elsewhere and end up marrying this woman named Pearl. And she was a very interesting woman. We refer to her as Grandma Pearl. And she did not necessarily make life easy for my dad and his brothers. In fact, some of it was even a little challenging. And I had said to my father, I said, wouldn't it have been better if Pop-Pop had married the first woman he had met before Grandma and Pearl? And my dad very adamantly me, looked at me and said, no. And for a second, I was kind of taken back. I was surprised, although I shouldn't have been because of who my father is. He said, then I would never have been the man that I am today. And I share this story with you because it shows you that he could have went down a totally different way of thinking and a totally different life. And he could be sitting there with regrets knowing that this other person was out there that was maybe a little bit, seemed a little bit more loving and caring. But instead, he looked at it from a different perspective. He never has ever used the word that it was a bad situation. And I know that it was not easy to lose his mother at such a young age. But he's always had this very different perspective on life and this very different perspective on the way that he grew up. And whenever he talks about it, he always talks about it with this love and this joy and this happiness. And even some of the challenging times that he has had, I don't think I've ever really seen him come from a place of hurt, anger. And I know there's been moments of sadness, but he has learned to forgive and let go. And I share this story because he could have taken a different perspective. He could have taken the fact that he had lost his mother and be angry and mad. He could have stayed in that suffering. He could have been in that victimhood and said, why me? Or why did my dad have to marry this person? But that is not my father. And that is not the perspective that he has looked at things. He looks at it as his dad made the choices that were right for him and right for, and what he believed was right for his family at that time. He chose the person he felt was the best to help him raise his three sons within his beliefs, being a member of the Catholic Church. And he chose somebody to share his life with him that he believed would bring more love to his life. In a very strange way, she did. And just like my father, I am grateful for her in my life. That's a perspective of not looking at a situation as good as bad but accepting it for what it is and learning from it and being in that place of love and bringing in more love and joy and happiness. 
that happened to us. I had a very unique childhood in the fact that I grew up with my cousins, not in the same house, but on a dead end street. And this wonderful childhood that I was so blessed to have, being so close to my aunt and uncles, and so close to my cousins, and being raised as one big extended family, came actually out of a quote unquote tragedy. Three brothers choosing to build together, one brother knowing that he probably didn't have much time left, which he didn't, but he gave his family what he could an extended family that was there to love and support them. And we were always there for each other. So where can you find the blessings in situations? Grateful for these situations. Where can you just accept things for what they are? Why does things have to be good or bad? I'm going to share one other story with you because I want to give you another perspective too. I had an uncle who molested a family member when we were younger. I didn't know this until later on in life, or maybe I did and I subconsciously had put it out of my mind, but I did not remember the situation. And I loved this uncle so much. And when I found out what had happened, it took a while to kind of wrap my whole being around the situation. A lot of self-reflection a lot of reflection on the situation and a lot of reflection on my uncle and on the person that this happened to. One of the things is that I really loved my uncle so much. I still do. And this was an action that he had done. And he could never forgive himself for this action. And one of the things that I felt very called to do was to forgive him. And so did the person who this had happened to. The reason why we chose to forgive him was to let in more love in the situation, to let more love into our hearts. And we didn't want to stand in this suffering. And the other side of this was the other man that he actually was, a loving man, a man who accepted me right away my only uncle on that side that did when I came out as a lesbian. The one that had us look at things from different perspectives. But he could never forgive himself. He could never see the good that he had taught us and others. He only saw the side of him that did something to him that was totally unacceptable. And I am not justifying what he did. What he did really did hurt him and many others in his life. We just have chosen to let go of that hurt and to be in more of a state of love and happiness. He could not forgive himself. That darkness consumed him to eventually it end up killing him. That incident was only a small piece of who he was. It was not all who he was. It was not an easy situation for any of us. But we all had come, and I say all, and I'm using the word all very loosely because I don't believe maybe it was all but I have and I know others have chosen to forgive him and let go to bring in more love into our life to see the love that he actually had added to our life and to learn and grow from the lessons that we were all taught he had taught us a lot of lessons on many levels just as much as we have taught each other I am grateful for him in my life and a part of me still wishes that he was here. I do not forget what he has had done, but I choose to let it go and to bring in love in my life. Where he was at that time and situation, the situation that happened, I do not know. I do not know all the pieces of the puzzles. I do know that he was here to teach us a greater lesson. I do know that I have grown from this lesson and so has the person this has happened to. We are choosing to let that go and choosing love and then choosing to release the judgment because we know that we are here to be because we know our purpose is love. Our purpose is happiness, our purpose and joy and that we are not here to suffer. We are here 
to lighten our loads and those of the people around us so that we be- can become more enlightened beings so that we can raise our vibration and raise the vibration of the planet so we can move into the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth dimension and instantaneously create the life that we want. And one of the ways we can start to move in that direction is releasing that notion of good and bad, letting go of judgment, and accepting things for what they are. They are here to help us. They are here for us. They are not working against us. They are here to show us more love, more peace, more joy, and happiness. It is our choice to stay in that suffering, to stay in that hurt, to stay in that sadness. My choice is to choose love. And I want you to reflect on a few questions before we go. Maybe write them down, come back to them. What can we learn to help the collective and help ourselves? Does punishing people and ourselves really help us? Can we shine our light and love on the situation, on the person? And if we choose to shine our light and let more love and light in, what would that look like? Some questions for you to sit with, some questions for you to discern, a whole topic for you to actually sit in and really find your truth in this topic. And your truth at this moment may be to totally disagree with what I said, and that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. That is just where you are at this moment. And this is where I am at this moment. But I hope that you do sit with this topic. I hope you do reflect on it. And I hope I hope you choose to let more love and light into you and into the world. I am so grateful for all of you. I'm so grateful for our time together, for you to listen to this podcast. If you think that this topic or any of the topics in any of my podcasts would benefit a family member, a loved one, a friend, please forward the podcast onto them and spread the love even more. Thank you all for taking the time today to listen. Until next week, spreading all my love to you and shining my light out to the world to help make this world a better place, a brighter place, filled with love, peace, happiness, and joy. Bye-bye for now.